Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to C Sharp for automation testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about typecasting. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 5 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so what is typecasting is all about? Well, converting a type from one type to another is what is typecasting. Something like this as you see in this picture. Well, typecasting is otherwise called as type conversion. So because C Sharp is a statically typed at compile time, after a variable is declared, it cannot be declared again or used to store values of another type unless the type is convertible to a variable's type. So it has to be convertible unless until it is convertible to that particular type, you cannot use that. For example, there is no conversion from an integer to any arbitrary string. Therefore, after you declare a i as an integer, you cannot assign the string hello to it. So if you declare int i is equal to 100, and if you try to declare i is equal to Karthik, then it won't work because i is an integer. You cannot assign a value string to that particular integer. So you need to have some kind of explicit casting or implicit casting. So what are the different types of conversions or casting available in C Sharp? The first one is implicit casting, as I said before. But the good thing about this implicit casting is there is no data loss and it will be done automatically by your compiler. So that's what is implicit conversion. I'm not going to go very, very detailed about that yet, but while we start writing a little code about it, you will see how it makes sense. And explicit conversion, which has a data loss may, maybe, but it's not very sure, but it depends upon how you convert that. But here you have to explicitly specify what type you have to convert that particular type. For example, if you're going to convert a integer to a string, then you have to explicitly specify that you need to convert that particular integer to a string. All right. And there is one more type like user defined conversions, which can be done via user code, with some helper classes, and it's completely up to you how you write that particular helper class to convert that particular user defined uh, operations, right? So there is one more self interest learning corner here where you can learn something about boxing and unboxing, which is also a kind of interesting topic. If you have time, uh, while learning this particular course, while learning this video, please go ahead and watch what is the concept of boxing and unboxing in C Sharp. All right, so let's work with the typecasting then. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working so long. And this time, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get rid of these cores completely. And I'm going to add a few code here, maybe very, very few lines of code. The thing is, the first thing I'm going to show is a very, very boring implicit conversion because this is done automatically by your compiler. So for example, let's say you have a value for int 16 of a salary, which is pretty much like this, oops, something like this, and you will get an error because the range of the min value and the maximum value of the int 16 is something which you can see from the go to declaration or the go to definition. If I go to the go to definition, you can see that its maximum value is this and you cannot assign a value beyond that. So let me copy that value and if I paste it right here, that's the value I can give at a max for in 16. But if I want to use this particular maximum value that I can use into some other integer, which is an int 32, then it will automatically convert to that, to that particular value. Let's say if I want to use that to a salary uh, increment variable, so I'm just going to specify salary increment is equal to salary, something like this, which means it is automatically converting a int 16 type to a int 32 type right here. This is what is the implicit conversion. And now once again, you can ask me, what is the big deal here? The big deal is you can now assign a maximum value to this salary increment not the 32767, but you can give beyond this particular value. And it is still legal here. 
So that's the implicit conversion since it is done by the compiler. But as you can see here, there is no data loss here. So whatever data it is available, you can just print that particular value and you can see that the value will be actually available for you. If I want to print the salary increment, you can see that whichever value that you supplied for the salary increment, that value is currently available for you without any data loss. So to prove the point that it is losing some data while you do a explicit conversion, we can do a additional lines of code here. Let's say, for example, I'm going to use uh, maybe double of uh, income tax. And here I'm going to give a salary of this dot, uh, dot this D. And uh, I just want to print this particular value of the income tax. Let's say if I want to print the value of the income tax this time. And if I run this, you can see that I get the value with the decimal point, which is okay. But if I try to convert this particular income tax of double to an integer, for instance, let's say if I want to convert that. So how do I convert the explicit conversion? There is a explicit conversion specifier, which you can do by means of a parenthesis that you can do something like this. Here, open a parenthesis and specify the type explicitly something like this. And this is still legal. You can see that it still works. So your double is now being converted to an integer. And now if you try to run this, you can see that particular data is losing some of its data, which is in decimal points. So it's now printing 23234, but it is not printing the dot 234 decimal value. The reason is because integer will not hold the decimal points into it. And you can see there is some data loss. That's what is the problem with the explicit conversion, right? You have to specify the exact type which the type is actually expecting for the conversion. And if you don't specify that exactly, you will encounter some data loss. Well, how is this really going to affect your automation now? It's coming back to that because this is not a C-sharp course. This is a C-sharp course, of course, but inclined towards automation testing. So how is that going to affect our automation testing area? For instance, let's say we have a page object model class let's say use a login page. So if I want to create a class uh, here, something like this, let's say if I want to create a class, public class login page, and I have some page object models or maybe some properties uh, like string username in that username. And, and then I have one more page. Uh, let's call this as user defined or user list page and in this i have uh, some other stuff maybe list of users right something like that i have two properties in it but don't worry about it yet properties we will be talking about that in a later point of time but as of now let's say these are like two variables you have and now if i want to do kind of conversion here there is a one more special kind of type available in c sharp which is kind of which is called object and this object is a super class of every class available in C-sharp. And you can see that this is the first class. If there is no inheritance available, it is not inherited to any other classes. It is a super class of all the classes. So it support all classes in .NET Framework class hierarchy and provides a low level service to the derived classes. This is the ultimate base class for all the classes in the .NET Framework. It is the root of the type hierarchy pretty, pretty clear, which is available in your C sharp metadata. Super. Uh, so if I want to convert that particular type, maybe I'm just going to convert that to an object type just for an explanation purpose. So don't worry about it. Let's say login page is equal to new. I'm specifying the new because if I want to create an object for a particular page, uh, for a class, then you need to use the new keyword. So new login page. And now if I want to access the particular property, the username property in there, I can just use dot, but it won't appear here. The reason is because you have to explicitly cast it because it's an object type here. The login page is an object type. You have to specify the exact type here, which is nothing but the login page. 
and you have to specify the variable login page and fully cast this in parentheses and now if I hit the dot you can see that you will see the username property right here which means you're converting that particular type login page in here something like this and now you can get the access of the username property and you can use it but there are some instances where you will face some kind of problem let's say within the login page and within the user list page you have a method which specify public void click button just for example I'm saying and this is a dummy 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 word method here let's say this method is available in both of these classes click button and let's say if I want to access that particular method right and I have accidentally what I did I accidentally did a typecasting of uh, the instead of the login page I'm just typecasting it to user list page and login page object variable or the instance variable and then if I hit dot you can see that it automatically turns me to give the list of users here this time but actually it is an it should be an object of the login page but it is not because it's an object type and I'm casting it to a user list page and then I'm trying to click this button click button here it's a problem right and you can see that it's also misleading this time login page should be for this particular property and this particular method but since we have wrongly casted this particular instance variable value with a user list page and once I even I cast it and click the dot it automatically brings me up the wrong method which is nothing but the click button this guy and it also shows me the properties belonging to that particular class the user list class so these are some of the problems that you will that you will face while working uh, with the explicit casting so in order to get rid of all these uh, loosely typed programming there is something called strongly typed programming in C sharp where you will not encounter these kinds of problems right we will be dealing about those kind of uh, stuff in next video of this particular video series so stay tuned guys you will learn a lot about that and by the way this is the end of this particular video thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day